Hi, I'm Vanessa Gillum, and we're here at my home, um, where I have a family home shop here at Memphis and Toddlers, and the audience is made up of uh, parents that have infants and toddlers, grandparents that have infants and toddlers, and family and friends. Uh, infants and toddlers view nature differently than we do. We see a dandelion on the ground, and we want to get the weed killer and kill it. Um, children get it and they um, explore it, they tear it apart, they eat it, uh, <laughs> they blow the little thistles on it, uh, the same with mud, um, we say yuck, and of course they get it and they build things with it, they throw it, they feel it drip from their fingers in between their toes. Uh, so nature has a whole lot to offer uh, little children in their development. Uh, a long time ago, uh, Herbert Spencer wrote a, a book, like 150 years ago. Uh, and what it said was, uh, children's play is merely just to get rid of excess energy. Now, nowadays we know different. We know that children, when they play, they're learning. Uh, but the lasting effect of his theory still stays in effect today uh, in outdoor playgrounds and stuff. That's fun and all right there, but um, it's only you're not engaged uh, very long in it. But whenever we give them different experiences, it turns on their brain. Uh, nature has a way to enhance children's abilities and, and cause their brain to develop through the experiences that they're, that they're engaged in. Um, and as we're going through these, these slides, I want you just to focus on uh, what the children are playing with, the materials that they're playing with, how they're interacting with it, and how they're focused and engaged, and of course, most of all, how happy they are when they're out there. The first three years of life, uh, of child's life, is the most crucial for all their learning, uh, lifelong learning skills, because the brain's still forming. Uh, all these little billions of cells are in there, um, trying to grow, and uh, what they experience is sparks um, the axons and dendrites, and that uh, creates the synapse. That's all just big um, words for, that's what makes the brain work, <laughs> and grow. And what does it? Uh, get stimulated the cells then they die and that's very um, that's not good because the the more experiences the children have then that causes all those brain cells to grow and uh, your children's uh, level of learning will be here uh, up here if the more experiences they have more um, those cells are turned on and so they won't die uh, interactions of objects are very important for the brain just as uh, our food groups are for us for our development um, what they experience and touch and feel and eat uh, outside is, is nutrients for the brain. Uh, just as you see here, uh, little Leah uh, experiencing that grass. She's very focused. You can see how she's very engaged in just playing with some grass. And the same here with the turtle. You can just see their little minds just going, just to work in there. Uh, infants and toddlers are also eager and curious learners. They gain what, uh, knowledge about themselves and the world around them by what they experience and encounter. As you can see, the sunflower and the snow. It's not just uh, nature has, has things all through the seasons uh, for children to, to experience. Eco-psychological self, <laughs> big word, uh, is a child's natural sense of self in relation to the natural world. Uh, just like this child has figured out um, her hand uh, is familiar or familiar to um, that sassafras leaf. She's made a connection. Also, emergent sense of self is the experience or the process of, of, of how they um, look at something. These uh, little toddlers are experiencing the sand, but they're processing it differently. And the reason that they do that is the warm and fresh air of outside inspires them to explore freely, and that's what we want them to do. We want them to explore on their own because it always takes them to that next level of learning. They have, uh, they seek out their own sensations, just like Bridget and Leah are doing here. Bridget's using her finger, and Leah is using her hand to explore that mud. This most, uh, the social and emotional well-being of a child is probably the most important development uh, that there is uh, for your child. Um, this, all this research-based stuff says that emotional well-being and social competence is what gives the foundation for brain development and their learning abilities. In other words, if your child ain't happy, then they're not going to, um, they're not going to get along with others and they're not going to reach their goals. 
Children involved with nature are more resistant to stress. They have lower behaviors, uh, behavioral disorders. Uh, they don't have much anxiety or depression, and they have a higher measure of self-worth. And again, all this stuff is, um, is yeah, I know I'm happy. <laughs> Uh, the greener the environment, the better it reduces stress. Uh, just like adults, um, when we get uh, aggravated with our spouse or, or someone like that, uh, one of us is going to go outside. <laughs> so, uh, or if we've had a stressful day, we come home, we kick our shoes off, we get a glass of wine or a glass of sweet tea, and we head outside we're either on the back porch, on the deck, or we're in our, our gardens going through it um, because we are drawn to be outside because it, it relieves that stress. And children are no different. They have, um, they have their levels of stress. It has a, common, a, common, a uh, calming effect on, uh, and it helps us with our positive outcome of emotions and behavior. Typical little uh, rambunctious little two-year-old right there. And she decided she was going to lay down and, and watch the leaves fall. It's like she's tasting some there, too. <laughs> um, tummy time is very important um, for the development of an infant. I wanted to touch on that real quick because um, the, that tummy time develops their shoulders and their muscles and their neck and their forearms so they can develop on into sitting up and crawling. Um, but they hate it. They hate tummy time with a passion. <laughs> and... Um, uh, you can put all kinds of toys in the floor, you can do um, all kinds of things, but when you take them outside, the common effect that the fresh air gives our brains and relieves stress, as you can see, she is very much engaged. She's not, not whining, crying one bit. Uh, you can see she's bundled up. It don't have to be uh, in the springtime or, or thing. Um, you know, the outside in the fall and wintertime is, is just fine too to take infants outside. Again, nature has all kinds of things for uh, the development of children. They're just happy and calm because they're they're free to play on their own. They are learn they are um, free to learn on their own. And again, there's lots of green stuff out right there. Um, going outside strengthens the children's development in all kinds of ways. Uh, most important, though, to they need to understand language and solve problems on their own to get along with other people. And all that begins with the experiences that they have in infant and toddler when they're infant and toddler age. Uh, it helps them become fun functional adults. And as you'll see there in that picture, those two little one-year-olds are building a, a structure with rocks. And they're sitting in some water, <laughs> in a stream of water. But they're getting along. They're not fighting. They're not trying to knock over these blocks uh, that when they're inside, yeah, they'll, they'll build on their own with blocks and stuff like that, but it won't last long. They'll start knocking each other's stuff, and it's mine, 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 mine. <laughs> but outside, it, it gives them that to where they're not, they don't feel that uh, tension and stress. The same here uh, with the length of engagement. Um, there's three, uh, three young ones with uh, one truck, one, one spoon, and one bowl, and together they're, they're filling that truck up. Uh, parallel play is the same. They're playing together, and um, but they're not. They're they're parallel playing, and and they're not fussing over what what they have. Uh, infants won't communicate unless they feel at ease. And there you can see they're communicating on their own, and uh, they talk without using words because they have that atmosphere of of being of feeling free to be themselves. <laughs> um, laughing is another thing. You won't get that kind of laughter with toys. You won't get that gut rolling uh, laughter. That's just uh, those children playing in water hose. Uh, you won't get that with any kind of toys. Um, again, uh, the environment outside is uh, inspires more than indoor environments. Physical skills, um, crawling motivators, <laughs> uh, fine motor. See how engrossed she is there in that? She's just eating it up. Um, the wonder is the most important motivator for life on learning. They learn through their senses uh, because they seek out their senses. It's in their nature to do so, just as it is in ours as adults. Let's see some pictures here. Uh, nature offers things to hear with, see with, touch, smell. Uh, stimulates the focus and, and turns on the brain for them to kick with. Uh, imagination, it stirs creativity, 
And there's no app for that right there. <laughs> there just ain't. Um, by including indoor, out, I mean, including outdoor experiences and if it's a toddler's day, it will nurture the brain development and enhance all their developmental skills.